In this presentation, I will show you the different functions and methods of string in Python programming language. So let's start with the len function. Len function counts the number of characters. If I write say s equal to say computer. Now, if I write len within bracket s, it will return the number of character within the string s. That means the computer has eight characters within it. So it returns eight. Next, capitalize. It returns a copy of the string with its first character capitalized. Suppose I'm writing s equal to have a nice day and all are in small letter. Now if I write s dot capitalize, now it will return the same string with the first character in a uppercase letter. Look h of the word have becomes capital letter and rest of the letter will remain same. One more thing, if I print s, s remains in the original state. Since the string is immutable, so the original string remains as it is. All the functions of string returns a separate copy of a new string. Next, lower. This function returns a copy of the string converted to lowercase. If I write a string with a lowercase and uppercase alphabet, the lower function convert all the uppercase letter to the lowercase alphabet and the lowercase alphabet will be remain same. If I write say good day with mixed of uppercase and lowercase say I am writing G in capital letter then O in small letter again D in capital letter then D A Y. Now if I write S dot lower so it will return the whole string in lowercase letter. Now upper upper function returns a copy of the string converted to uppercase if i apply the upper function on the same string look what happened all the character of the string s becomes in uppercase letter next title used to convert the first character in each word to uppercase and remaining characters to lowercase in the string that's mean look at the same example s equal to good day so it has two word one is good and another is day now if I write is dot say title look at the output the first character of each word becomes uppercase and rest of the character will be converted to lowercase next swap case convert all uppercase characters to lowercase and vice versa of the given string and written it let me take the same example say s equal to good day this string is mixed up with the smaller case and lowercase letter here G, D and the A of day are in capital letter. O, O, D and Y are in small letter. So if I apply swap case upon this string, look what happened. S swap case. Look at the output. The first character of good, that is G, which was in capital letter, now becomes small letter. This double O, which were in small case letter, it becomes capital letter. So all the cases has been interchanged with lowercase and uppercase respectively. Next, is upper function. It returns to if all the cased characters in the string are uppercase. Let me initialize a string, say s equal to say computer. And each and every alphabet of the string are in uppercase. Now we will check whether the string contains uppercase letter or a lowercase letter. Now if I write s dot is upper function, it will return true because each and every character of this string are in uppercase. Now if I write s equal to the same string but all are in lowercase letter, so look what happened. If I write s dot is upper, so now it will return false. If I initialize a string with mixed cases, where C and T are in capital letter and rest of the characters are in smaller case. Now if I apply S dot is upper, look what happened. It will return false. So is upper function will return true only when each and every character of the string are in uppercase. So in the same way, is lower function returns true if all the cased character in the string are lowercase. Now look, S is initialized with a string which has all its alphabets are in smaller case. 
Now if I write s dot is lower, so it will return true because each and every character of the string are in lower case. Now if I initialize the string s with the same word but all the characters are now in capital letter. So what happened if I apply s dot is lower? So it will return false. Next is title returns true if the string is a title case string otherwise it will return false title case means the first character of each word in a sentence must be in a capital letter so if the is title function encounters such type of string so it will return true otherwise it will return false let me initialize the string s with python is an interpreter where the first character of each word are in capital letter now if i write s dot is title it will return true now if i write the same thing but it is not in a title case now i am converting the i of is in small case letter uh, e of n in small case letter and i of interpreter also in a small case letter now if i apply s dot is title so it will now return false because the sentence is not in a title case format. Let's move to the next function that is the is l num. L num is a short form of alphanumeric. So this function returns true if the string is alphanumeric. That means the string contains alphabets on numbers or it may contain both. Let me initialize this s as say a b c d 1 2 3 4. So this is an alphanumeric string because it contains alphabets as well as numbers. Now if I write s dot is a l n u m plus bracket open close so it will return true. Now if I write just a b c d within the string s now if I apply s dot is a l n u m so it is also returning true. Now again I am writing s equal to 1 2 3 4 within quotes and if i write s dot is a l n u m it will also return true so is l num function will return true if it encounters alphabet numbers or both within a string now if i write s equal to say a b c d at the rate 1 2 3 4 now if i apply s dot is a l n u m now it will returning false why because this string contains some special character next is alpha returns true if all the character in the string are alphabetic let me initialize a string with a b c d now if i write s dot is alpha now look the string contains only alphabets that's why it is returning true if i write an alphanumeric string say a b c d 1 2 3 4 it's an alphanumeric string because it contains alphabet as well as numbers if i write s dot is alpha look it will return false because all the character in the string are not alphabets let me proceed to the next function that is is digit it will return true if all the character in the string are digits for that let me initialize a string with 1 2 3 4 so whenever a number is written within quotes or double quotes it will not be considered as number it will be treated as or considered as string so now if i write s dot is digit first bracket up and close now it will return true because this string contains the digits only if i initialize this s with a b c d 1 2 3 4 no if i write s dot is digit it will return false because the string contains alphabets as well as digits so if the string contains only digits for that only is digit will return true only let me show you two more functions which are similar with the is digit functions they are is decimal and is numeric is decimal returns true if all the character in a string are decimal character if not it returns false and in case of is numeric returns true if all the characters in a string are numeric character if not it returns false though these three functions look same or by reading this description you are thinking that this three function will return the same result no the result will differ in case of some unicode used within python programming language let me show you some example based on these three functions at a time first let me initialize s with say 
38. Now, if I print s dot is digit, then s dot is decimal, s dot is numeric. So, look at the output. All the three functions are returning the same result that is true, true, and true. Now, we all know that ASCII ranges from 0 to 255. Let me show you the character of ASCII 189. So, if I write CHR of 189, so this is the corresponding character of the ASCII 189. So, this 1 by 2 is also a numeric value, but obviously it is not a digit. You can say it as an unicode. Now, let me initialize the string S with this unicode. Suppose I'm copy this character and let me put it within the code. Enter. Now, if I print the same thing, that is s dot is digit is decimal and is numeric look at the output now for the is digit and is decimal it is returning false and is it a numeric value yes 1 by 2 is a numeric value so it is returning true so for this some special cases and for some unicode it will return the different output but most of the cases if it encounters a simply a digit all the three functions will return the same value that is true now I'm not going to show you any more example. Uh, let me skip it for the time being. Now the next function is is space. It returns true if there are only white space character in the string. Suppose a string is initialized with a character. There may be a more than one character also. Now if I write is dot is space, it will return true. Now if I initialize a string s with a b c d space e f g h now look what happened if i write s dot e space it will return false the e space functions returns true when the string contains only spaces next find it returns the lowest index in the string when the substring is found else written minus one so it has a syntax look at the syntax first the string name then dot find and within this dot find function there will be three parameter out of which one is mandatory and the start and end are optional so whenever we write a substring the find function search that substring within the given string if it is found then it will return the lowest index of the first occurrence and if it is not found it will return minus one we can also search a substring within a specific start and end index so if we specify the start index it will search the substring from the start index up to the end this start and end index are optional let me show you an example first of all let me initialize a string s with say johnny johnny yes papa now if i write s dot find let the substring be johnny now look at the output it will return zero so there are two johnny within the string so it will return the lowest index of the first occurrence so this is the first occurrence the first word is the first occurrence and its first character is at index zero so it is returning zero now if i write s dot find within bracket say the same substring johnny and now let me search the string up to the index five look what it will return it will return six that's mean the first j is at index zero next this is at index one then two three four this space is at index five so the substring johnny this johnny is started from the index six that's why it is returning six so whenever we specify the index along with the substring it will find the substring after this index or from this index onward now if i specify some start and end index suppose i want to find the substring johnny after index 10 and within index say 16 so it will return minus 1 so after 10 there is no johnny now the next method is l strip it returns a copy of the string with leading characters removed if used without any argument it removes leading white spaces First of all, let me initialize a string with say 
some space then hello so there are some leading spaces within the given string s now if i print s every time it will show the space in front of this word hello now to remove all these leading spaces let me use the l strip function so it would be look like this s dot l strip and it has no argument then press enter look it will return the word without any leading spaces now if the function contains some parameters it will delete all possible combination of the given parameter from the left hand side so that's why i have written returns a copy of the string with leading characters removed first of all let me initialize a string with say there where the t is in the capital letter and h e r e are in smaller case letter if i write s dot l strip within bracket say i'm writing t h e so this t h e substring is present at the left hand side in within the given string so the given argument of the l strip function that is t h e is present as a substring within the given string in this case l strip will delete all possible combination of t h e from the left hand side that's mean if i press enter it will return only re because it deletes t h e from the left and the remaining re will be written by the l strip function now if i passed argument t h e but in this case t is in the smaller case this t h e is not present at the left hand side of the given string s because there is a capital t not the small t so it will return the whole string l strip function will remove the given argument from the string if it encounters the exact match of the substring otherwise it will return the whole string all possible substring of the given argument for example here it is capital t h e are matched with the left of the given string and if it is found then it will be removed otherwise it will return the whole string so for in this example if i passed argument as t h e or t e h or h e t h t e e h t e t h if any of this found it is removed from the left of the given string s let me show you that if i write t e h so in this case also it will return re because t h e will be removed from the left hand side now if i write h e t this time also it will remove t h e from the left hand side the same thing happens for the rst function also but this time returns a copy of the string with trailing characters removed if used without any arguments it removes trailing white spaces let me initialize a string with hello and with some trailing spaces now if i print s so there is the word hello along with some spaces at its end now if i want to remove the trailing spaces for that i have to write s dot r strip with no argument so it will return the word only the space has been deleted now again let me initialize the same string with some other value say i'm writing there now if i write s dot r strip within brackets say i'm writing uh, re look at this example very carefully so it will remove everything from the right hand side whenever it encounters re or er the r strip function will first find the all possible combination of re that is it may be re or er from the right hand side so it encounters er from here now from there so whenever it encounters er from here it will delete everything from this position so it is returning only the th next the strip function it returns a copy of the string by removing both the leading and the trailing characters based on the string argument passed let me initialize the string s with some space then hello then again some space now if i write is dot strip with no argument look it will remove all the leading and the trailing spaces from the given string and only the word will be returned next move to the next method that is split function it returns a list of string after breaking the given string 
by the specified separator. Let me initialize a string with have a nice day. Now if I want to split the whole string with respect to spaces, for that I have to write is dot split and there will be no argument in between parentheses. Now press enter. So this split function will return a list which contains each and every word of the given string s. So it split up the whole line with respect to spaces. You can also iterate this list by using any loop, better to say for loop. Let me show you that. Let me write for say word in s dot split. So this s dot split will return the above list and from this list it will extract one word at a time and that will be stored within this word variable. Now let me print this word variable. Now look what happened. Each and every word will be extracted from the given list which has been generated by s dot split function and those words will be displaced in separate line by using this for loop. Now if I write the same string let me copy it down from the above. In place of spaces, let me write down hyphen. So all the spaces are replaced with hyphen. Now look what happened. So if I apply split function upon this string, so it will return a single element within the list. So this time, since there are no spaces, so it will be treated as a single word. And since split is not finding any spaces in between this word, so it is returning the whole thing as a single element of the list. Now what to do if you want to split the string with respect to hyphen? For that, you have to write s dot split and this time within parentheses, let me write down hyphen within quote. So whatever the character we are specifying within the argument of the split function, it will split the given string with respect to that character only. Look what happened. The split function has splitted up the given string with the help of this hyphen. Now let's move to the next method of string that is a join. It returns a string by joining all the element of an iterable separated by a string separator. So what does this iterables? Iterables are list, tuple, string, dictionary sets, etc. So here we will use only the string. Let me initialize a string S1 with say a hyphen and say S2 equal to say ABC. Now if I write S1 dot join within bracket S2, look what happened. Each and every character of S2 has been joined with the help of S1 that is with the help of hyphen. Let me show you an another example. Say I'm writing S1 equal to say 1, 2, 3 and S2 equal to say ABC. Now this time if I write S1 dot join within bracket S2, look what happened. The string S1 that is a 1, 2, 3 comes in between A and B and B and C. So whatever the argument you are passing within the join function for this example, here it is S2 and S2 contains ABC. So ABC will be splitted up and again they will be joined with respect to the given string S1 here in this case 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3 comes in between A and B and again within B and C. So the final string is A123, B123, then C. If you reverse the argument, that means if S2 comes first, dot join and within bracket this time write on S1. So look what is the output. So this time 1, 2, 3 has been split up and again they are joined with respect to ABC. So ABC comes in between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. Let me show you an, another example. Suppose I'm initializing a string S with have a nice day. Okay. Now if I write hyphen within code dot join and s dot split is the argument of join function. So first of all s dot split will be executed and this function will split it up the string and convert it into a list. So this split function will split it up the given string with respect to spaces and it will return a list of words. So the words of the list will be concatenated with the help of this hyphen. Now look what happened. 
So it will return the same string and this time the spaces are replaced by hyphen. So you can use this trick in your program. Next, count method. It returns the number of occurrence substrings say sub in the range start and end. Let me initialize a string with python is an interpreter. This is awesome. Now, if I write is dot count within bracket, let me write down the substring say uh, is. So it will return three is. Look, here it is the first occurrence, next the second occurrence, and the third occurrence. Now if I specify start and end index, so it will find the substring within the given range. For that, if I write is, then comma, let me give the start index as say 15 and the end index as say 30. So it will return 1. This t is at index 15. So count it from the beginning. P is at index 0, Y is at index 1 and count like this and you will find that T is in the index 15 and this space is in the index 30. So it will find out the number of occurrence of E's within the 15 index and within the 30 index. So it will get this E's within this range and within this range there is only one occurrence of E's. So it is returning 1. Next ends with returns true if a string ends with a specified suffix if not it returns false let me initialize a string with say good day now if i write is dot ends with say day it is returning true because the given string ends with the word day now if I write s dot n suite within parentheses, it's hello. Hello is the argument of n suite. No, it will return false because hello is not present at the end of the given string. That's why it is returning false. Just like count, we can also use a start and end parameter. So it will find out the presence of substring within the given range. Now if I write day, comma, four, comma, seven, so it will return false. Now if I write, 4 comma 8 it will return true since when I'm writing 4 comma 7 that's mean it will search the day from fourth position and before seventh position the character at index 4 is the space G is at index 0 O is at index 1 the next O is at index 2 then D is at index 3 this is the four index and 7 is the last index so this time it will search for the word within 4, 5, and 6. So within 4, 5, 6, the day is not present. Day is present at 5, 6, and 7 index. So when I'm writing 4 to 8, at that time it gets a match. So it is returning true. Similar to ends with, there is also a start with function. It returns true if a string starts with a specified prefix string. If not, it returns false. Let me consider the same string, good day. Now if I write s dot starts with, say I'm writing good. Good is present at the beginning of the given string. So it starts with a good. The string is starts with good. So it is returning true. Now if I print abc, no, this time it will return false because the string is not started with the strings abc. So it is returning false. Here in this case also, we can also assign start and end index. Next index method it returns the index of the specified element in the list this method is same as find function but it arises an exception if substring is not found that's mean if the substring is not found a value error exception is arised let me show you an example let me initialize a string s as python is an interpreter now if I write say s dot index i, now look it will return 7. That's mean the index of p is 0, index of y is 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the index of i is 7. So it will return the index of the first occurrence of i. Obviously, there is an another i in the interpreter, but it will return the index of the 
first occurrence if i write s dot index within brackets say x this time x is not present within the given string so it will return a value error substring not found but if i write s dot find within brackets say x it will return minus 1 if the substring is not present within the given string index function return value error find returns minus 1 so this is the difference between the find and index there are two more parameters which can be added with the index function obviously they are optional the optional parameters are start and end so we can find a substring within a start index and the end index let me show you an example so let me consider the given string s equal to python is an interpreter from there let me find out say s dot index within bracket say let me find out i after index say 10 and within index 15 so let me see whether this i is present within the index 10 and 15 or not yes it is found it is found at index 13 so look at the given string this i is in index 7 then this is 8 9 10 11 12 so this i the i of interpreter is at index 13 so it will return the index of this i we can also write the same function with the substring and the start index this is optional if i do not mention the end position so it will find out the substring after the given start index if found then it will return the corresponding index else it will return a value error the next function is partition it split the string at the first occurrence of the argument string and returns a tuple containing the part the before separator argument string and the part after the separator let me explain it with an example first let me initialize the same string say s equal to python is an interpreter so this is the given string now let me write s dot partition within parenthesis say is now if i press enter it will partition the given string with respect to the separator is notice carefully partition always written a tuple which contains a portion before the separator the separator itself and after the separator that's why it returns python which is situated before is this separator is is itself an element of this tuple and an interpreter this portion that is after the separator is will be another element of the tuple so the tuple containing the first part which is present before the separator the separator itself and the portion after the separator now if i write is dot partition suppose i am writing a separator which is not present within the given string so what happened look the whole string become the first element of the tuple since this separator x is not present within the given string so it returns null that's why the second element of the tuple is null since x does not present within the given string so there is no question of right part of the separator one more thing you have to know that if there are two is within the given string the partition will take place with respect to the first occurrence of the separator let's proceed to the next function replace it returns a copy of the string where all the occurrence of a substring is replaced with another substring let me initialize a string as this is a good book now if i write s dot replace first let me write down the substring which is going to be replaced that is the old substring and this substring will be replaced with say cook now let's print the output so it is now showing this is a good cook so this book will be replaced by the cook so this is the substring which is going to be replaced and and cook is the new substring which will replace the old substring finally it will return this is a good cook now let me show you in another examples let me consider the same example this is a good book now if i write s dot replace and let me replace all o with say a 
look what happened. So each and every occurrence of O has been replaced with A. Next, format. The built-in format method returns a formatted representation of the given value controlled by the format specifier. This format function is a big chapter. It contains a lot of features. If I go into the deep details of format function, this video will get lengthy. So I am showing you some of the features which are related to the string. Let me write down a print statement within this. Say I am writing hello. This is second bracket open close or you can say the curly braces open close. This is called placeholder. Next we can also assign the index of a placeholder. So this is the first placeholder which is represented by zero. Next your current balance is suppose I am writing the second placeholder that is uh, rupees say one. So one is not the value this is the index of the placeholder after that let me close the quotation then dot format within bracket I am writing say Ishan and then say I am writing 20,000 bracket close bracket close now if I press enter look what happens it will print the first argument that is the Ishan in place of the first placeholder that is curly braces zero curly braces close so it is showing hello Ishan your current balance is and in place of curly braces one it is showing 20,000 so you can add multiple arguments within the format function now let me change the current value as 5236.25 now look what happened it will just replace 20,000 with 5236.25 now again I am copy this line let me paste it over here for the second place holder let me add an another property say I am writing 8.2 f that's mean it will display this figure in the form of 8 to f f means it's a floating point value since it's contained decimal fractions so it is represented by f that is a floating point value so i will reserve eight places for this value out of which two are in the decimal place now look what happened the first one is remain same hello ishan your current value is look eight places has been allotted for displaying this value out of which two has been reserved for the fractional decimal place and six places has been reserved for the integer part out of which four are filled up and there are two spaces which is lying in between this word rupees and this digit five so there are two places which are not used over here one thing let me show you let me copy the first example let me copy it down if I delete the index of the placeholder, let me delete the 0 and 1 from over here and let me press enter, it will show you the same thing. So this technique is the default argument. This technique you can call this is positional argument. We can also write the same thing by like this. Look, let me change this 0 with say name and this balance with say BLC. This is the balance. So let me write over here uh, name equal to say Ishan and uh, BLC equal to 20,000. Now if I press enter, it will display the same output. Hello Ishan, your current balance is rupees 20,000. So it replaced this name with Ishan and BLC with 20,000. We can also mix this argument. Suppose let the first argument be as it is within curly braces 0 and let me change the second argument as uh, BLC and for that I'm writing BLC equal to 20,000 it doesn't matter it will display the same output let me show you some number formatting with the format function before that you have to know that D means decimal integer C means Unicode character B means binary format, O means octal format, small x means hexadecimal in small letter and capital X means hexadecimal in capital letter. So there are a number of number formatting types are present like N, E, capital E, F, small f, G, etc, etc. So I am not going to show you each and everything in this video. 
let me show you some simple example of number formatting so the first example let me write print within bracket the number is within curly bracket let me write down d quotation close dot format within bracket say i'm writing 7890 so it will return the number is 7890 now if i write the same thing but this time d will be replaced with f and i'm writing some decimal fraction of a year say one two three point five two four seven eight nine five six three so it will return the number one two three point five two four seven nine zero so by default it will return the six decimal places after point now if i write print within quotation say let me find out the binary of some number so for that i have to write say bin equal to within curly braces 0 colon b and for octal let me write down say 0 colon o then hexadecimal equal to 0 comma capital x quotation close dot format and within brackets say i'm writing 13 so within each and every placeholder i have written zero because it will access the element at index zero that's mean for over a year it is 13. now this 13 will be converted to binary first then octal then hexadecimal the same number has been converted to each of these three number system let me press enter uh, sorry i have written comma in place of colon it will be colon for that it is showing an error that is a key error so 0 comma x this is an error so it will be colon now press enter loop this 13 has been converted to binary that is 1101 octal is 15 and hexadecimal is t so this is all for this video still if you have any query or problem write it down in the comment box i will try to reply you back as soon as possible thank you